Hello, my name is Kirk Sakata, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can add a comic book dot effect to virtually any photo. Most of you are probably aware of what I mean by the comic book dot effect, but for those of you who aren't, here's an example. And there you go. Now be aware that there isn't a shortcut or filter that will let you instantly create this effect. In fact, it takes 15 steps to implement. Don't worry though, the steps are short and relatively pain free. Alrighty then, let's open Photoshop and begin our lesson. The first step is selecting the image you want to use and opening it in Photoshop. When selecting your image, keep in mind that it works best when using a fairly large photo. Mine is 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. If you start with an image that is too small, the dot effect will look more like an overlay of polka dots rather than an integrated dot pattern. I'll show you what I mean later in the lesson. The next step is to make a duplicate layer of your image. Look at the layers palette. Now press the control key, the key mark CTRL, and the J key simultaneously on your keyboard. Doing this creates a copy of the original layer image. The background layer is the original image, and the duplicate layer we just created is named Layer 1 by default. Double click on the Layer 1 label and rename it Soften. For Step 3 we'll soften the image with the blur. On the menu click Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. This opens the Surface Blur dialog box. Enter a value of 5 for the radius and 15 for the threshold. Then click OK. In the fourth step, we'll duplicate the soften layer by pressing the Ctrl and J keys again. Rename the new layer Desaturate. You've probably guessed that we'll be desaturating this layer. Go to the menu and select Image Adjustments Desaturate or use the keyboard shortcut Control shift u For Step 6, we'll add a new layer by clicking the Create New Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers palette. Rename this layer Halftone. Now, click on the Channels Palette tab. We're going to load the luminosity of this layer by pressing the control key while clicking the RGB layer. Note that the luminescent areas of the image are now loaded for this layer. Now for step 7. Return to the layers palette and make sure that you're on the halftone layer. We're now going to select only the areas that aren't currently loaded, or the inverse of what is loaded, by pressing Ctrl and I. Next we'll fill the selection with black. Press your D key. This is a shortcut for setting the foreground color to black. Now simultaneously press your Alt and Backspace keys to fill the selection. The selected area should appear darker than before. Release the selection by pressing the Ctrl and D keys. For step 8 we're now going to work on the soften layer. Turn off the top two layers by clicking the eye icons at the left of each layer. Then click on the soften layer to select it. This step is where you start to see the transformation. We're going to reduce the amount of detail in the image by using the cutout filter. This step will help make the image look less like a photo and more like an illustration. Under the filter menu, choose artistic and cutout. This opens the filter window. See the settings in the upper right column? Change these so that the number of levels is 8, edge simplicity is 0, and edge fidelity is 3. Then click OK. In step 9, we want the colors to be more vibrant to give the image more of a comic book look. Duplicate the soften layer. Remember the shortcut is Ctrl J. Change the layer's name to Hard Light. Now we'll change the new layer's blend mode to Hard Light. The blend mode menu is at the top of the layer's palette. Just click on the menu and choose Hard Light. Now for Step 10. Let's go back to the Desaturate layer. Click in the empty box to the left of the layer where the eye icon appeared before. This makes the layer visible. Then click on the layer to select it. In this step, we'll add black outlines to the image, making it look more like an illustration. Before I proceed though, I'm going to change my magnification view by pressing the Ctrl and minus keys so that I can see more of the photo on the screen. 
Now we'll finally add those outlines. From the filter menu, select Artistic Poster Edges. Once again, the settings are on the upper right side of the screen. I recommend setting all three options to one, but you can experiment with the thickness and intensity to achieve different line thickness. Click OK when you're finished. We want the color from the lower layer to show through, so we'll change it to saturate layers blend mode to pin light. I think the black outlines look really cool here, but if you want to see how the image looks without the outlines, just turn off the layer. OK, now just like before with the desaturate layer, click on the halftone layer and then make it visible by clicking inside the empty box to the left of the layer. Load the layer by hitting your control key and simultaneously clicking on the thumbnail image in the halftone layer. Click the Create Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette. This converts the selection into a layer mask. Step 12 and we're almost finished. Now make sure that the layer mask on the halftone layer is selected. The thumbnail on the right of the layer should be surrounded by white brackets. If you're not sure, click on the thumbnail, then click on the right. You should see the brackets appear each time you click on the thumbnail. This is where it all comes together. From the filter menu, select Pixelate and Color Halftone. Now I'm going to demonstrate the polka dot effect I mentioned earlier. First, I'm going to enter a value of 8 and click OK. While the dots have been created, they appear as more of an overlay to the image rather than being integrated with my photo. I'll click Ctrl C and then do that last step. Now I'll choose Filter, Pixelate, and Color Halftone again. This time I'll use the smallest setting which is 4. If you enter anything lower than 4, you'll see an error message and the option will automatically revert to 4 when you close the error message. Click OK to finish. Much better. Fair warning, if you start with an image that was too small, a setting of 4 may still result in a polka dot effect. Now for step 13. We'll invert the dot pattern by pressing Ctrl and the I key simultaneously. And there it is. Previously the background was darker and the dots were brighter. After inverting, the dots are darker than the background, as they would be in classic comic book print style. Add a new layer and rename it Outline. Then fill that layer with the background color by hitting Alt and Backspace keys. On the Layers palette, change the Fill Percentage to 0. Now, click on Layer FX and choose Stroke. From the Position drop-down menu, select Inside. Then change the size of the stroke to what you think will work best. You want it thick enough to be dramatic, but not so thick that it ever powers or obstructs your image. To complete the effect, we'll add a caption box to make this look more like a comic book panel. Start with the box. First, select the color you want for the background of the box. Using the Rectangle Marquee tool, draw a rectangle where you want your caption to appear. Then, from the Create New Layer menu, choose Solid Color. Now, add a stroke to the box using the layer style, as we did in the previous step. The stroke shouldn't be as thick as the image outline. Press the D key to change the foreground color to black. Then use the text tool to add a word or phrase that relates to the scene. I'm using a font named Comic Book that works great. You can download it at defont.com. Ta-da! That brings this video to an end. Hope you found it useful. If you didn't work along with me, replay the video and try it on your own.